Hi guys! This is the audio fool and for today, we're going to review the Klipsch Reference Premier 160M bookshelf speakers. Horn noted speakers are very interesting and is certainly part of hi-fi history and who hasn't seen the gramophone on the Grammy Awards? Another one in the history books is Klipsch. They've been around for so long and are advocates of horn-loaded speakers, which they claim make all of their speakers easier to drive, lower in modulation distortion, and higher dynamics. I'm a bit older and more laid back now, and I prefer analytical sounds, but before, I used to own a lot of Klipsch, way back when I was still young and horny. Sorry, couldn't resist the horn joke. There's a new RP600M model that came out and that's Steve Guttenberg's Speaker of the Year, the Audiophiliac, and not the actor from Police Academy and Three Men and Baby, by the way. These RP160Ms are the outgoing model and are now discounted to around $440, US while the newer one is $550. So let's find out if it'll be a bargain buy. After all, they look almost the same. How different can they sound? I'll be comparing it to the LS50s and the Pioneer SP EBS73, but before that, let's take a closer look. The 6-inch copper-colored ceramic cones get my attention immediately and they look like the big brother of the LS50s. Then you see the 90x90 hybrid track tricks, or I, I'll just call it the square horn. 1-inch titanium tweeters providing the tweets. It's no heresy or forte, but this certainly looks quite good. This goes from 45Hz to 25kHz, plus minus 3dB, and sensitivity is 96dB in paper. Pardon the imperfect specimen, but I rescued this from an irresponsible owner from eBay. There's no support stand either, but I just used thicker sorbetane discs in front to simulate the tilt. At the back, you have another squarish horn acting as the port and four binding posts should you be so inclined to buy amp $440 speakers. It weighs almost 20 pounds and is a large 16 inch by 8.8 .8 by 12.8 inches. Okay, so these are one of those speakers that don't really partner well with the Ragnarok. For the most part, the vocal imaging is way off to the left, to the right, center, all around, and all at the same time. And once you do get past that phantasmic imaging, the treble is a bit too harsh, too bright, too brilliant, too sibilant for me, and it's grating to my ears. So... I used the Cambridge Audio CXA80 instead and with the Cambridge the vocals are now centered and it wasn't harsh at all. It was pretty manageable and wasn't painful to my ears. So in the 0% chance that you have a uh, Ragnarok and you're going to buy an RP160M, don't. So moving on to the test tracks for Trials of the Past by Subtrack. The Klipsch almost made the third note perfectly. It just lost a little bit of SPL. But the bass was really nice and tight just the way I like it. The vocals were also a bit forward and there was a slightly longer decay in the echoes. For I've Got You Under My Skin by Frank Sinatra in a duet with Bono, the Klipsch had a nice, deep 3D sound stage, but the vocals had a bit more reverb in them. Compared to the LS50, it, the LS50's vocals were flat, but it was really nice and solid. For Don't Know Why by Nora Jones, the Klipsch was a little bit faster in terms of pace, and it made the song a little bit brighter, a little bit more sibilant, a little bit more brilliant. Than, uh, than the LS50s, but it wasn't bad, it wasn't harsh. And the vocals were nice and rich, full bodied, but I was missing the coarseness and detail in the LS50s. 
For Alicia Keys, If I Was Your Woman from the MTV Unplugged album, the clip had a deeper, tighter bass, which made the song really enjoyable and fun. But again, it wasn't really as detailed and as textured as the LS50s. Because if you listen closely, or if you compare them very closely, you'll notice that the clip has that extra reverb as an extra echo in its sound and it's slightly muddying the details but if it's just enjoyment we're talking about i prefer the clips over the ls50s it was much more fun and enjoyable for pints of rome by respiggy the clip had a deeper 3d wider soundstage which gave a better orchestra feel and the extra reverb and echo made me feel like I was listening at an opera house. But after listening to the LS50s, I start to miss the heft and the weight of the instruments. And there's just better instrument separation in the LS50s. Next up, we have the Pioneer SP EBS73, which I mentioned in my video review that I liked it because it made very good music except that it could be just a little bit more exciting. On the other hand, the clips are very exciting speakers, or rather they're very excited speakers. But let's see how it goes. For Trials of the Past by Subtract, similar to the LS50 comparison, the clips made better bass, better soundstage, and the Pioneers had better details and more solid vocals. For I've Got You Under My Skin, the differences in pitch between the two speakers are much more noticeable now and the EBS73 had a cleaner sounding output and more solid vocals but the vocals were much more airier in the clips and the bass was also a bit heftier. For Nora Jones, don't know why, the clips made deeper wider soundstage but the vocals were a bit shoutier and it was less coarse and there was also less detail in the snare and in the instruments. The Pioneers on the other hand had a cleaner output and there was more details and textures to the guitar and piano notes. For Alicia Keys' If I Was Her Woman from the MTV Unplugged album, the clips had that nice 3D feel and it made you feel like you were in a concert versus listening to a flat recording as compared to the Pioneers. But with the Pioneers, you can easily hear the background details more. But in the end, it was much more fun with the clips. For Pints of Rome by Respiggy, the Pioneers had a very clean output and you can easily separate the instruments. With the clips, it had that grand orchestra feel but the instruments came out too rich and eventually everything starts to jumble up in a mess. Of course, this is in a comparison to the Pioneers. So it's not really that bad. So overall, I think the clips did very well against the LS50s and the Pioneers, but they're not really the speakers you use for analytical listening. They're really speakers that you bring out when you want to have a party and not the Pioneers, which is what I like the most about the clips. They're really fun and musical and they put a ring to that digital sound which makes it a little bit more analog, similar to how tube amps have that distortion which are actually pleasing to the ear. And the looks aren't half bad, you have that hefty bass and you also have that holographic imaging which makes it a little bit more alive. So it's kind of like a tube amp but with bass. What I don't like about the speakers is that, well, they have that extra reverb or echo and it kind of muddies the details a little bit. So it's kind of like this the way I'm talking versus if I talk like this. But yeah, I guess I'm exaggerating. But it does kind of muddies out the details for me but at the same time I realize it's probably also what makes the speaker so fun and musical but what I hate the most about the clips is that 
you have to partner it with a amp that rolls off the highs or won't excite it too much because it can get really harsh so maybe try Arkham Sound, NAD, or the CXA, or most tube amps. And if if I took a listen with my shit Ragnarok, I would lose my hearing pretty soon. So re you really need to take care in pairing. But otherwise, I've been audio fooled. Fun sounding speakers at a fun price. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or suggestions, just write them down below. See you in the next video.